G'day mate, welcome back. Today's DaVinci Resolve quick tip is going to be looking at input sizing or input scaling and how that can affect your project. There's a lot of different options that you can choose from, but you really do need to know which one you should be selecting for the footage that you have. So let's just jump straight in. Okay guys, let's just launch our project settings before we import any media and let's go to our image scaling and go down to input scaling resolution files that are mismatched. So this is going to handle how our footage is imported and how it's then scaled on the timeline resolution which we set here. So we can set this resolution to whatever we like, okay? It doesn't matter the source material. And when we go into our image scaling, how we choose these options will determine how our mismatch resolution to the project settings is then going to be resized. So we have four choices here. The first is center crop with no resizing. So this means that clips of differing resolutions are not scaled at all. Clips that are smaller than the current frame size are surrounded by blanking and clips that are larger than the current frame size are cropped. Our second option is scale full frame with crop. This means that clips of differing resolutions are scaled so that the clip's shortest dimensions uh, is fit to match the frame. Excess pixels are then cropped off. So the, our next option is scale entire image to fit. This is DaVinci Resolve's default setting and automatically adjust clips of differing resolutions so that they are scaled so that the clip's longest dimension is fit to match the frame. The shorter dimension, which is normally the height, has blanking inserted and that's where we get the terms letterboxing or pillarboxing from. Okay, the fourth is stretch frame to all corners which is really useful in projects that are anamorphic media where clips of differing resolutions are squished or stretched to match the frame size in all dimensions. In this way, anamorphic media can be stretched to match the full raster or full raster media can be squished to fit into an anamorphic frame. An added benefit of this setting is that it makes it very easy to mix anamorphic and non-anamorphic clips together in the same project. Each of the scaling settings outlined define how clips that don't match the timeline resolution are scaled and fit into the project window. They all kind of have their pros and cons. It really is dependent on A, the source footage, B, the extent to which the footage is resolution mismatched in relation to the master project settings, and C, how you're wanting to use the media in the project. So let's say you're wanting to take 1920 by 1080 footage. So in here, you've gone to your master settings, you've gone, you know what, I'm gonna do a 4K blow up, I'm gonna choose Ultra HD. I'm going to go back to my image scaling settings and I'm going to select scale entire image to fit, which is going to automatically change our timeline. And I'm gonna say, match timeline settings so it's automatically going to scale our 1080p to 4k okay it's going to automatically scale it and that's why our super scale here is turned off because once we match the timeline settings and it we're telling it to force conform it to 3840 by 2160 we then don't need to scoop super scale but if we turn this off right then we get our super scale settings back and we can then say, you know what, I am blowing it up by two times and I wanna make sure that that looks good. So super scale it at the same time up to 3840. So take the output. So when I'm exporting, I want you to super scale the footage, not just match the timeline settings. So there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can use these settings to get the best image quality at the end of your project. The big downside of adding super scale here is obviously once you go into your project and you start to edit, every clip is going to be affected by the super scale. And that also means that your system is going to run very slow unless you create or generate optimized media, which is going to take up a lot of disk space. So a lot of the time I choose none here. And I match the timeline settings 
and then I'll click save. And now you're ready to start importing your media and make a great project. All right, mate, that's all I've got today. Hopefully you've found that tutorial enjoyable. There is a link in the description which will take you to a more in-depth tutorial on this topic. So you can either click it down there or probably be in the link at the end or up here somewhere. So uh, check it out. It's a, a, a much deeper dive into the subject and it goes m more into the background of what's actually happening in Resolve. So until I produce something again, I <laughs> I'll see you in the next one, fellas. See you later.